Uh, right, sorry, I won't start the meeting. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the petition hearing uh, for uh, Thursday, the 7th of September. I'm the Cabinet Member for Property, Highways and Transport. If you're watching online, welcome. Um, are we online? Yes. Where's the camera? Oh, up there, yes. Um, uh, as there are only officers or members present, I don't think I need to go through the fire alarm and um, exit uh, rules and regs. I'm hoping that by now you know the um, necessary exits. I would just ask you to turn your phones to, uh, to silent if you've uh, got them with you and, and they're on. Um, the first petition is in respect of um, North Road West Drayton. Um, requesting traffic calming and a parking management scheme. The petition organiser is a man called David Bennett, who is not here. Don't know whether he's on his way, not coming, don't know. Anyway, he's not here. Um, so obviously I've read the report and we've all seen the recommendations, but we do have two councillors here for that ward. Uh, would either or both of them like to speak? I'll have to ask you to move over here because uh, for the benefit of those on um, maybe watching us on uh, YouTube, they can't hear you if you're not there. I'll announce you as Councillor Sweeting on the basis that, again, people might not know who you are if uh, they're watching. Thank you, Chair. Um, the issue um, before us this evening is in two parts. One is about the, um, the, the speed issue, and the other is about residence parking. If I can start with the residence parking issue. Um, I know that this has been um, mooted several times in the past, but things have actually moved on quite significantly in this area for three reasons. One, the Elizabeth Line has definitely brought more traffic to our area, and it's been a magnet. And I know you might think that North Road is quite a way away from, from the station, but it, it isn't that far away. And it does offer free parking for people that want to use the Elizabeth Line, and there's a route through Drayton Garden Village and Holly Gardens to the, the back of the station. Um, secondly, there's no doubt about it, with the Heathrow, um, we're having more and more people parking in the ward of West Drayton in various roads um, because it's free to park. Um, and um, it's not only this road, but several others. But the third, and I think the most Im uh, significant, is the impact of Drayton Garden Village, um, the large development um, which has got its own parking spaces, but they are very, they are very strict in, on who can park in those spaces. And if you are a visitor, um, you often don't get the permission to park on Drayton Garden Village, and so you, you park in the nearest road. Now, Porter's Way has a parking management scheme, uh, but North Road, especially that part abutting Porter's Way, um, is often very busy in respect of the parking. Now, the problem with North Road is it's quite a long road, and so in the past we've had a problem with um, Mulberry Crescent, which as part of it only has got a parking management scheme, because when it went out to the informal consultation and then the formal consultation, part of the road wanted it and part of the road didn't want it. I know that this, is, this happens a lot of the time. But I do think that, um, yes, um, the residents in this petition have asked for a parking management scheme, and I would support that because I know from experience trying to visit people in Drayton Garden Village is, <laughs> even for, for councillors, is a difficult uh, a challenge. Um, so I would support that, but I would also um, emphasise the fact that um, um, if it goes out to informal consultation, if in some way it can be dis sort of divided up into areas of North Road, because I'm pretty certain that some areas um, near to um, Sipson Road are not going to be supportive of a parking management scheme where others nearest to Porter's Way will. So that's that bit out of the way. <laughs> um, the second bit is all about um, speed. Now, the audit that was done not too long ago would suggest that there's no, not a problem. 
Oh, sorry. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Um, there are two roundabouts, and there's there's um, a, a sharp bend, but you can see that the road, in fact, is a cut through from Porter's Way to Sipson Road, and that's what um, you know residents are really highlighting. There was a meeting of residents this time last year, um, where um, arranged by the um, member of Parliament. And the issue, the main issue, and it was attended by quite a few residents, the main issue that came up was the issue of speeding. Now, I know that um, an audit has been done. I think it was done over a week, but maybe a longer period be a, a good idea. I realise that tables to reduce speed are possibly not the way forward, but is there anything that can be done? Is there anything like lines across or signs on the... On the um, on the roundabouts, um, flashing lights. I know that there are some areas you can put sort of flashing lights there. Anything that would show the residents that we are taking the whole thing seriously. Because there's no doubt about it, between the time, you know, there's a straight bits of that road and you can see them, um, they do go above 30, but the average is, is below 30. Anyway, thank you. No, thank you, Councillor. Uh, do you want to speak or is, has your colleague done for you? Okay. Um, well, look, you make good points. Um, in, in terms of parking, <coughs> as you will know, um, when you install a residence parking scheme, they creep, inevitably creep. You start with an area, everybody's up in arms, they want a residence parking here, the next road doesn't want it at all, you install it here, and in five minutes, then, then of course, people... Exactly. Um, I do have some concerns about the, uh, the, the, the garden um, bit area. Uh, because if there's no parking for them and there's no parking for their visitors, where are they going to park? Um, and uh, you are in danger of having your res residents of that spot banging on your door saying, "Oi, what have you done? Thanks very much," sort of thing. Well, maybe we should get round there with our leaflets. But, um, but um, so I do have a slight concern about that. I, I don't have an. I don't think we have an issue um, when we, if, if we, assuming we do a survey of uh, of um, people on that to look at it. Um, uh, incrementally so, so that we don't have to look at the whole road and say well, the whole road said X and therefore uh, we could look at sections of the road because it is as you say quite a long road and we could look at you know sections of numbers and say well right this block definitely want it the next block don't I mean we know what will happen of course we'll give it to that block and then you know but um, so I don't have too much of a, a, a problem. I mean, you you will appreciate, and I'm sure the residents will, or they will when they get their leaflet uh, through, uh, that of course we now charge for permits, um, and so we're much cheaper than other boroughs. Um, but but nonetheless, we do charge. Um, and um, but anyway, you know, I, I don't I don't see a problem as far as I'm concerned in examining uh, the, the res park issue. I, I think. Uh, I mean, there is a long history, and it's getting worse, of Heathrow parking um, uh, in that ward and in your ward and, and surrounding ones because, hey, presto, you can park for nothing there and go off for your holidays. Or worse still, of course, are the, are the companies who, who offer you, uh, who offer you uh, um, attended parking and then dump your car on some, somebody's side street outside their house. Um, so I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, in terms of the speed, we have done it. I mean, the last speed survey, I think, Mr. Austin, was, was as recent as October or something, last October. Uh, can I, um, how, long do, how long do we do these things for? They're, they're, they're 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but it's normally over a 10-day period, but the data's captured for seven full days. Okay, okay. Um, I don't know what we do. Well, uh, could we find a speed-activated sign? Uh, it, yes, I'm sure we could. Um, we, I keep ordering, I keep asking officers to order new batches of them. Um, they are helpful. I mean, they don't have a camera attached to them because we're not allowed to. Um, so we don't, you know, we can't um, suddenly collect um, lots of fines for it. But um, they are a deterrent. Um, we could look at perhaps putting some um, more speed, speed uh, signs. Um, 
I don't know about, uh, you mentioned strips. You mean sort of rumble strip type things. I, I don't know if we've used those, have we? Uh, we have, and they've proven to be unpopular with the adjacent properties because of the noise. noise. So you yeah. solve one problem, councillor, and quite often it leads to perhaps another problem. I think that's often, that's often the issue because, um, and, and of course that is one of the big issues with humps. Everybody says, oh, let's have a hump. And then until until you happen to say, right, this one's going outside your house, and then it, uh, all hell breaks loose. Uh, yeah, councillor. Yeah, I'm afraid so. You can both stay there if uh, you, you you want. We've gone mad and got installed two two microphones. Thank you, Chair. Um, there is an issue on that estate also with motorcycles that are speeding up and down around there as well. But other than um, obstacles that make noises, I mean, there the are options potentially for, depending on what the tra which direction the traffic is going in, for the sort of like giveaway or sort of, I don't know, okay. chicanes, things that stick out into the road potentially. Well, again, it may not be suitable for that road, but I know there are other options besides you know, rumble strips or speed bumps or raised tables or anything like that. So there are other options. Um, my request would be that the, uh, if, if you are minded to uh, have a, a further test of speed, um, that it is for a longer period than the, than the 10 days. Um, yes, we did have a week's worth of data, but I, 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 I don't feel that Essentially, a week is, is a significant period. I, I, I may be wrong, but I thought they were being done up until a certain point for uh, two weeks, was my understanding. But um, when I've asked around, but um, if that is at all possible to have it over a slightly extended period, um, that that may be helpful. Um, but you, know, you guys are the experts in that, uh, so <laughs> you know better whether or not actually the, the, the period that currently exists is is sufficient. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if, if there was some, an issue there, may, maybe a, a chicane or something that would, uh, if, it's, hey, if it's proved to be uh, a problem, then yeah. that might be a, might be an option. Uh, I mean, um One issue that always comes up with um, parking management schemes, of course, is that there is a significant reduction in the number of parking spaces simply because the engineers have to comply with all sorts of uh, uh, rules and regs about where you can have one and where you can't have one and how far from a drop curb and all that sort of business. Um, uh, and the net result is is there are less parking spaces as in the road. Now, I don't know to what degree, I'm not well enough familiar with, with North Road to know to what degree the residents rely on the road for their parking and and therefore whether that would be an issue um, but um, if they've got off street parking or a lot of them have then that becomes less of an issue it's more it, it, it will act better to prevent um, commuters or, or, or holiday makers or, or whatever um, anyway I'm, I'm, I'm happy to look at it I don't think anything you've said um, sort of flies in, in the face of uh, reality um, um, uh, I, I think um, there are four recommendations here, and I'm happy to. Uh, and anyone, anyone got anything else you want to add? No, fine. Uh, well, there are four recommendations here, which is one to meet the petitioners and listen. Well, I've met the ward councillors. I haven't met the petitioner. Uh, two to note the results of the previous survey, and I think they have some value. Three to uh, uh, note the results of previous consultations on options to manage parking. But I think. If we look, I, I think I'm happy to look at it again, and, and let's look at sections of North Road, and perhaps afterwards you could have a word with Mr. Austin. I mean, not necessarily now, or, but you know, uh, to, to if you've got any input in which sections, how, how you'd like to section it up, if you like, that might be helpful. And then, subject to the outcome of those uh, issues, uh, we can decide if officers should commission an independent a further report and speed survey, uh, and. Uh, parking management scheme. Um, so if you're happy with that, I'll move those recommendations and um, we'll take the matter forward. Yes, good, thank you.
uh, sorry, so this is item two, Edinburgh Drive, Ickenham, uh, petition requesting the introduction of measures to reduce the speed of traffic. Um, uh, who's got the written rep? And do, they, who, do you read it? Yes. Right. The officer will read the written rep from the petitioner. Thank you for considering my petition and allowing me to attend your meeting to address you this evening. My apologies that due to illness I am unable to join you in person. My family has lived in the paddock in the house on the corner adjoining Edinburgh Drive since 2016. It is a quiet residential road where residents have driveways and permit parking outside our houses. These bays are usually full which narrows both roads to a single lane and cars weave to pass each other. In the seven years we've lived here, we have noticed a substantial increase in the traffic on Long Lane where cars travel from the A40 through Ickenham and onto Ryslip. Daily, it is common to come off the A40 and hit standstill traffic on Long Lane where drivers queue bumper to bumper along the road with increasing frustration. Cutting down Edinburgh Drive is an easy way around some of this traffic, but by the time cars reach this cut through, They've already been queuing for some, for some time and so typically they will pull into Edinburgh Drive round the bend by Dowie Martyrs School and accelerate rapidly where there is a straight stretch of road. I would estimate hitting their top speed as they race by the paddock. You will have read our personal tragedy whereby a two-year-old cat was hit by a driver who didn't stop, dying of her injuries the following day. I think it's time for a review of the traffic on Edinburgh Drive given its proximity to a large secondary school and residential properties, which would suggest to me that a 30 mile per hour speed limit, even if it's adhered to, which anecdotally I fear it is not, is too high to protect the school children, residents and beloved family pets of our neighbourhood. Thank you for listening. Okay. Um, well, before I make any comment, I see that we have a um, ward councillor present, Councillor Lavery. Happy to listen. I will, uh, I will keep this brief. Um, Edinburgh Drive is a potential cut through if you're coming down Long Lane. It's also a busy road because it's obviously got a large secondary school um, at the corner of it. Uh, the officer recommendations is that speed surveys are commissioned. Um, I don't think they've been done down there any time recently and that will give the best guide as to what the solutions to this might be. Um, I also note the comment that the school doesn't engage with the, um, the safer transport team in terms of school schools. So I, you know, I'd encourage more contact to be made because obviously, if the school can help, that will assist, um, and then see what the results of the speed surveys are, and that will inform future decisions. Uh, Councillor, you'll be thank you. You'll, you'll be delighted to know, uh, Mr. Austin informed me just before the beginning of the meeting that. Um, uh, uh, Letters have gone out to all the schools in the borough this very week, encouraging them all to participate in safer walking to school or whatever the exact term is. Um, and so we will pursue it. Mr. Austin, I don't know if you want to step in and say anything about that. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, we, we've invited every school across the borough to, to participate in all of our road safety events, uh, to take up the offer of bikeability training, um, pedestrian training and all the other things that, that we can help with and obviously to work on the school travel plan can lead to possible funding from Transport for London to improve the safety around the school so it's across every school but as we've got Dewey Martyrs as, as part of this petition I will ask colleagues to follow that up as well. Good well I think that um, is quite clear I don't have a problem uh, as you know one of the few concessions I've given to 20 mile an hour zones is around schools. Now clearly, um, well not clearly, but we have no intention of inst instigating one on Long Lane, although I think much of the day 20 miles an hour would be an achievement. Um, but it might be something we could consider as part of the overall on part of Edinburgh Drive. I don't think it would be appropriate for the length of it, but certainly part of it, uh, the, near bit, the bit nearest to the school. Um, so I think on that basis, um, I'm happy to move the recommendations, which are that we meet with the petitioners. Well, uh, apologies. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear you're not well, Miss, Miss uh, Pitaway. Um, uh, that 
and, and that I look uh, to officers to commission an independent report on 24-7 traffic and speed surveys uh, and to agree locations with the petitioners and ward councillors, if that would help. Um, and those two petitions I move, uh, sorry, those two recommendations I move.
Okay. Uh, I'm pleased to say we've now reached half past seven, so this is the third uh, petition request uh, tonight, Manaway Ryslip, petition requesting the introduction of speed calming measures. Mr. Gatt, uh, please uh, be seated. Press your button when you're ready. You have up to five minutes. So um, thank you for this evening. Um, just want to set out really Manaway. Um, I moved to Manaway three years ago, um, and like many people moving into the area now, it's becoming much more of a family-focused area, uh, or for younger people, it was quite a, a older generation in that road. But in my time, having seen it um, really being used not only just to get to the local schools. Uh, but the parks with parents and young children, but also old people, older people going uh, to the shops either at the manor or on Rystip High Street. My concern has been, um, and speaking to residents, has been about the safety really of not just the pedestrians but also of um, drivers along this road. It's increasingly becoming a rat run between the, the manor or Eastcote Road, straight, uh, sorry, from the manor, Eastcote Road and the high street. Um, obviously, understandably, particularly at peak hours, um, the opportunity to save a few seconds, minutes by cutting through, uh, unfortunately, tends to have been at increasingly at great, quite great speed. Um, I'm not anti-driver. I should state that I'm, you know, I love driving. It's more about the really the, the safety of fellow residents. Um, and you talk about this being classified under safer neighbourhoods, and this is a really important thing for me. It's not about um, re removing, you know, measures that would remove um, parking spaces or damaged cars or whatever. It's about just the safety of residents on that road and be able to, to drive down that road. Um, as um, recommended or requested in the report, uh, I would love to have uh, a new independent survey taken up by experts. The last one was done, I think, 2017. Um, so obviously over five years ago things may have changed um, again it was pleasing to see generally where the speed was but again 30 miles an hour down that road is pretty impressive um, even by a third of the car or the vehicles driving down that um, you may want to note as well um, Warrender um, School which is located just across Windmill Way have also been um, requesting uh, speed measures along that way now, I don't know the details of that uh, exactly, but again, it's, it is a problem for younger, you know, for children and, and parents at that time when trying to cross the road and basically safely take their kids to and from school. Um, I did also note about the issues around West Hatch Manor and Windmill Way being a bit of a blind spot. Um, I did note, surprisingly, that there was only three recorded accidents, slight accidents, at the edge of Windmill Hill. Um, but I'll be honest, even today, coming to here, crawling out, you know, again, car coming along Man Manaway nearly, luckily it was slow, but I couldn't see it because there were cars either side. Again, this is not about reducing parking spaces. It's very busy along that road. People have obviously more than one car, but it's about just measures, as I said, to, for the safety and security of, um, of fellow residents. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cat. Um, I'll ask you a quick question. I know we've got a statement from uh, yes. one of your ward councillors, which we'll oh, ask okay. the clerk to read out in a minute. But I was going to ask you a question. Um, have you been in contact with your uh, police safer neighbourhood team no. on the basis that they have... Uh, well, it's only the police that have the right to um, uh, uh, catch speeding drivers. Um, we can do our best to deter them, but we can't do anything about catching them. The police do have um, a speed gun or two that they pass between their neighbourhood teams, uh, and it might be worth rattling their cage okay. uh, to see if you can persuade them to come out, uh, and your ward councillors should be um, able to help you in that manner. Great. I can't promise you a result, but it's, mm -hmm. it's worth it. And they'll trot out one day with their gun, um, and if you had a discussion with them beforehand, you can say, look, the problem's really between 8.30 and 9.30 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon or whenever it might be, uh, all, all day or whatever, and and, and um, uh, well, I mean that yeah. that often acts as a good deterrent. Um, I'll just mention that as in passing. Um, could could if we've got a statement from Councillor Gawthorn, could you read it out before we go any further? Thanks. Unfortunately, as the petitioners know, I am unable to attend this evening. But I have spoken to them, and last weekend we had a short sites meeting. 
I did write to Councillor Bianco in early August to suggest this might be a situation which would lend itself to some informal initial dialogue or intelligent intervention to discuss the problems and what kind of measures might or might not be appropriate at this location. I assume the very prompt scheduling of this petition hearing has rendered this unnecessary or inappropriate. I have read the officer report. The 2017 speed survey predates me as a ward councillor in this part of Ryslip. The comments of one resident, which have been reproduced in full in the report, remind us there are differing viewpoints on this matter, and I for one would not favour such measures as speed humps myself. Nevertheless, we should not be dismissing the concerns which have given rise to this petition out of hand, and I would favour revisiting the issue with a fresh speed survey to help determine whether the situation has changed significantly since 2017. The petitioners themselves recognise that this location places constraints on what measures are possible, but they would welcome dialogue on their concerns and possible options. I hope the petition hearing this evening will be a starting point to this, and I've said I'll follow up with the residents after the meeting. Many thanks for listening. There you go. Um, right, so I think um, there seem to be several uh, issues, and, and one we just discussed before the meeting started, which is around the junction uh, with... Uh, uh, Manaway and uh, whatever the other way, Wimmer, Wimmer way. Um, and certainly we can look at that and uh, you will notice perhaps that we often put a few yellow lines in next to junctions or double yellow lines really at junctions to stop parking. Um, uh, it is a bizarre fact of course that um, the easier you see, uh, the easier you make it at junctions uh, the perverse nature of people is that that will enable people to go quicker. Um, so, um, and, and I, I'm, I'm encouraged to know, well, I know, I know the street anyway, but I'm encouraged to know that, of course, having cars parked regularly on both sides has a good deterrent effect in slowing cars down. I mean, maybe not as much as you'd like, but it slows them. If this road was empty, if we had double yellow lines down the whole, you can be sure that they'd be doing 50 miles an hour, not, not 30. So, um, there, there are pluses and minuses to these uh, things. Um, I don't see any harm in looking at a, a fresh speed survey. We've talked about locations, and I think that's a, a good plan. Uh, it gives us a better understanding. Uh, Mr. Austin's already said that he will look at that junction and, and see if there's some sensible, easy things we could do there. Um, we're, I have to tell you that I am not a fan of speed humps. Uh, or tables or whatever other things people call them uh, uh, and that really comes from the fact that more often than not uh, people come to me and say oh can we have speed humps can we have speed humps and we go yeah fine fine or whatever and we do the survey and we say right we're going to put one here and one here and one there and when people realize that one happens to be outside their house uh, they're suddenly a lot less keen on the whole idea uh, and we have recently, within the last year, had a situation where a uh, hump went in. This is actually on a, this is actually on a um, zebra crossing, but the principle is the same. Uh, wanting safer, uh, whatever, and there was good evidence to do it, which is why we did do it, which because we were reluctant generally. Uh, and and we've now got people. Uh, we even had a petition saying, can we have it taken now, because of the noise created by the vehicles going over. So I'm reluctant in those manners. Let's have a look what the speed survey says. Let's see what the officers can come up with, because there are other solutions we can try. Um, you know, we do install speed-activated signs. We may be able to install um, just some more reminders that it is uh, 30 miles an hour. Um, uh, in respect of reducing the speed, um, our current policy is that we will reduce the speed um, uh, we will offer a reduced speed 20 miles an hour around schools, but only around schools. Uh, there are some other places where it is currently 20 miles an hour, which, I, which happened before I came on the scene. Um, and uh, I, I, th again, the problem is uh, that we have no uh, ability to enforce. So it is nothing more than suggestive. Now, around schools, I see the value in it. Um, it, it, it gives people warning. I mean, along with the school signs and everything else, it's, a, it's an added layer of warning to be careful. Um, uh, I, I personally have views as to whether you need it on a Saturday and Sunday when the school's not open or uh, for the last month when everybody's on holiday. But you know, the, those are the difficulties around that sort of thing. However, here I think it makes good sense. There are 
four recommendations. Uh, one, that I meet with the petitions and listen to them. Uh, two, to note the concerns you've raised. Three, to note the result of previous surveys uh, undertaken in July 17. And four, um, to decide whether to seek to commission independent traffic surveys uh, and I do make that decision. So uh, let's get the surveys done. Let Mr. Austin have a look at the junction and see whether there's easy things we can do, um, and whether there are, or it, whether indeed there are other things we could do. Uh, um, you know, it may be that um, um, we could do things at the bend or near the junction or, or something else that would have a, a, an effect, um, and see where we go from there. Um, do you want to have a quick response? Please. Um, just to say thank you. Um, I should again sh keep stressing I'm not anti-driver and um, the, me the mention of speed humps was mainly in terms of one measure potentially. Um, I am completely in the hands of the experts about you know where, this, where are the, is there a speed issue, is it perceived or is it actually a real problem but also what the measures are particularly in the conservation area which the um, one resident has pointed out. absolutely understand that and it really is about managing all those um, competing factors. So speed humps is not the be all and end all at all. It's whatever is best, best suited for the road and would actually be you know, most effective. Good, thank you. Um, those items moved? Thank you.
Good, so it's quarter to eight. Uh, we can therefore start this petition uh, in respect of Marvel Avenue Hayes, a uh, petition requesting the introduction of parking bays at the end of Marvel Avenue. Um, the lead petitioner is with us, um, so I will ask you in a moment to press the button in front of you, the big white one, uh, and you have up to five minutes to speak. You don't have to fill five minutes, but you have up to five minutes to speak. I may then ask some questions of you, or uh, I see you've got a councillor here, and I will invite the councillor to speak uh, as well. Uh, so when you're ready, press the button and start away. Hello. Um, I'll be mentioning a few things that we already outlined in our cover letter. So mm -hmm. our petitions regarding the parking situation only at the end of the no-through road of Marvel Avenue, where the houses such as 104, 102, 87, 94, etc. are located. Our road ends in a curved T, and our petition outlines two main issues, one of which is parking in front of the hedge gate between houses 104 and 89, and the second is parking on the curved curbs um, at the end of the road. So firstly, there's a, there exists an informal no parking sign in front of the hedge gate, but this isn't always followed through, and parking there results in the road being bisected in half. It then becomes exceedingly more difficult to manoeuvre your car from your driveway for other residents who wish to then make a three-point turn. Temporary parking there, such as delivery vans, don't normally pose a problem, but recently non-residents, such as visitors, do pose a problem. Mm. Um, we don't always know who they're visiting, so we can't then follow up and chase them or contact them to request them to potentially move their car for allowing people to exit or enter their driveways. And even if they are requested, they, there's nothing you can really say because the, legally they have full right to park there. Secondly, there needs to be some sort of outline on the curbs where drivers know where they can park. Occasionally we've had situations where the drivers have parked their a vehicle a large distance away from the curb, and we have photos to show this. Um, and parking off the curb then narrows the road, which makes manoeuvring again way more difficult. And this becomes really tiresome for everyone involved to either request the person to repark closer to the curb or move their car further along the road. It's become more hazardous and more difficult to continuously deal with, so we would like there something to be more formal to help everyone know where they can park without causing a hassle to other people. This has become worse if all three sections are occupied away from the curb, so you have only a small sliver of space to actually manoeuvre your car from the three um, locations without hitting anyone. Um, and this has also caused other issues, as mentioned before, to larger cars, vehicles such as rubbish collecting trucks or delivery vans. They have to enter other people's driveways to then manoeuvre the their van or truck to reverse back or reverse back the entire length of the road, um, which has cars parked on both sides. And so, and this also has caused some slight blind spots, as quieter new cars can't be heard by people walking or children playing. Um, but we don't want to lose the parking on the curbs, because not everyone has enough um, parking in their driveways, and we, we can see this. So we have our suggestions of having yellow or red marked lines in front of the hedge gate stopping the road being bisected, because it, this gate doesn't belong to anyone, it's just the council's. And number two, and it doesn't lead anywhere, it's just the gate that exists before for the allotments. And number two is having marked bay curbs on the edge of the curbs, which won't disrupt anyone's driveways, as well as it's on the road so they know they are legally allowed or can comfortably park somewhere. And this will then address, address the issues of blind spots, open up the road to manoeuvre more easily, and we can also accommodate any guests or visitors coming to our place. Um, and by having council road markings will result in less hassle for everyone else involved in the future, so no one's having to chase everyone up repeatedly. Um, as informal and verbal agreements can only carry on so far with residents that you know, and it's really impractical to ask new visitors or other mm. residents to move their cars to more suitable locations so there is no collisions or there is no hassle in manoeuvring your own car. Um, but yeah, so. I think what she's trying to also say is the fact that. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, oh yeah. Uh, so finally, we just want to make sure we don't want resident-only parking because we do have visitors and we do want external people coming in, and we don't want formal bays the entire route of Marvel Avenue because this is doesn't really um, resolve any of that if they have any issues or not. It's just the curb and the hedge gate that we're concerned about. Mm -hmm. So, and we have photos if you would like to see for mm help. -hmm. Can I ask a question? Um, you, you, you talk about parking against the curb. Do you mean on the curb or just next to it? Um, so, so currently the residents 
sorry. So both. So currently, the residents will either park away from the curb, or they, m or if they do park on the curb, there's more space for people to leave their driveways, etc. But if there's bays, they will know where they can and can't park to make it a bit more easier. Uh, Mr. Austin, can we we don't. This isn't one of the roads we have on curb parking, is it? One wheel on the curb, or whatever the description is, we normally use. There, there we mark bays on on the curb, on on the pavement, don't we? On uh, but this uh, is this isn't. Sorry, you'll need to put your microphone on. Uh, this yeah. isn't this isn't one of those yeah, roads. Th 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 this this um, Marvel Avenue uh, chair had uh, an informal footway parking scheme introduced in November 1989. Oh, okay. And there are remnants of some old. By uh, markings that are no longer legally compliant to, to current standards, but um, yeah, in 1989 there was an informal arrangement uh, in Marvel. So we could renew those. That would be an option we to, to re-mark um, them Absolutely. where uh, where where they uh, where they permit. Yep. Okay. Uh, Councillor, do you want? do you want to speak on this? I'm sorry, you'll have yeah. to come over here. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, officers. Uh, I do give the opportunity to my local residents. I fully support my residents. Actually, they are suffering uh, for the parking and moving the cars. So I really appreciate if you marking the lines over there at right? Ojalo. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Um, sorry to the lady over there. I will. Ask, I will invite you to speak in a moment. Um, I think there's an issue here around what the council can and can't do. Um, I will ask Mr. Austin in a moment to, to, to say a bit more on the subject. Um, ov obviously, we could come along and put yellow lines down, but that would prevent parking for anybody. It's not um, it's um, not not discriminatory. Um, and and or we could conceivably put marked bays down um, on curb. Uh, Mark bays, which may result in, with, with the standards changing, there may be less spaces down there than there were previously. Um, but obviously, we can't limit that to whoever wants to park. I mean, it, it's it's there for anyone that wants to park. Um, I, I appreciate the issue you've got, but I'm not sure there's a ready solution that works. Um, I'm glad you don't want residents parking, because um, one thing that is uh, clear uh, is that for a residence parking scheme to work, it needs to encompass a whole raft of streets. So we would have to get six or seven streets together who all wanted it, and then, yes, hey, we could, we could install a, a residence parking scheme. Uh, but, but you're not asking for that, so that's a good step. Uh, Mr. Austin, do you want to, is there something usefully you could um, add at this point? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I think, th thank you for, for your submission, and, and it, it's clarified some of the items that obviously we've been in discussion via email so so thank you for coming today and, and, and clarifying a few issues I think for me we need to undertake a site visit uh, uh, chair and, and, and then just assess the situation because whilst we can garner some information from Streetville in light of your testimony now I'm clear on what you're trying to achieve so I think it's now an action for me to take away and, and undertake further investigation thank you Okay, well, that sounds like a good first step. Um, once once uh, Mr. Austin or a member of his team has been down to have a look, then, then we can have a clearer view of what the council can do, what it has powers to do, and what it can't do. Um, did you want to add anything? No, I think if you do, I'm afraid you'll have to come over here and speak into the microphone, because those watching us on YouTube can't hear you if you're not close by. So what I was trying to say exactly what she said is I think you've addressed the situation there is the fact that I think would rather as you can see from the images that the car that's parked in the vicinity is very much not near the curb of the parking and what we're trying to address is that if that if that car was actually parked near the curb of the vicinity it would actually help us so I actually live two doors away I can't get in and out of my drive without having to do a full-on u-turn without that car being there. But if you can see from the images, that car's very much away from the curb. So for us, it's more that if the car actually was closer to the curb, 
maybe this would address the situation. So I think you've addressed the situation where you can come visit the location. Yeah. Um, one thing I, I would ask is, is this a, 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 an all day, every day sort yes. of problem? It's not, it's not particularly yes. a problem in the morning or the afternoon, but because it obviously be at any point if, if it's a day. particular time of day, then it would be important for the um, for our officers to attend at that time. But if it's an all day or it's any an particular day random, problem, it then could it be would at be at any point of given day okay, that we yeah. can yeah. see that happen. Okay. 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 Thank you. Oh, yeah. Sorry, the counselor wants a quick word. I'll, I'll let you have a further word. Okay. Would you like me to pass the images? Uh, thank you. I think if you if you rain the bills, I really appreciate for that. We can see there are situation. If we visit on evening time, I think better. The most people, mostly people, they parking their cars over there. So really hard for the people who is living end of the road. So I really appreciate. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else desperate to add something new? The lady over there was keen to say something. Actually, uh, yeah, if you can see the images. Sorry, I can't see you. Okay. So that's the the whole road. Uh, the parking is like one uh, tire on the road and the other on the other side. But these on these two curbs, they are not following that rule at all. Because if you see the board on the end of the road, it says parking park on one like I, I hope you understand park, park on one tire on this uh, um, uh, curb and the other side on the. But these cars, as you can see the image, they always park on that curb. So that's making it most difficult for us to manoeuvre. So if they have, would have been parking on that curb, it would have been much easier with one tire up. But it's never, ever done. Yeah. Okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully when, the, um, when the officers come and have a look, uh, that will be apparent and they'll, they'll come up with it. Okay. Thank you. I think, sorry, one, well, I'll give you one more shot. Yeah. Thank you. So, could you give us the notice uh, one or two weeks before you visit there, then they can join the office, mm -hmm. or yeah, maybe myself as well? Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. I would like to say something. Is it with regard to this? Uh, yes. I'm afraid you'll have to come over here. You'll have to come over here. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, please sit. Please sit. Okay. And, and speak into the <coughs> microphone. Um, I live in 93 Volley Road. Which is which is uh, around the corner of the Mar Marvel Avenue. Yeah, I did sign as well in the petition. My name is Avtar Singh Bemra. So I have always mm, this problem. The people park uh, the long van front of my gate. Yeah, not even sometime front of my gate. It's very hard to come out um, from my parking. Yeah, and the old the old other place, the people just do come and park, like a uh, block the uh, the parking way. So. Yes, thank you. I'm not sure there's a great deal we can do about. Um, what can we do about bad parking? Um, it's it's. If someone's obstructing your curb, so I would recommend that you register your drop curb with the parking enforcement team. So if somebody obstructs it, you can call our hotline and they can send somebody out to issue the offending vehicle with a ticket? Okay, no, it's not uh, that, uh, mm, like, uh, they can park uh, up to the curve, but they they block totally half of my... The, mm, I, I'm, af I'm afraid in, in a lot of these roads where there are more cars than houses or spaces, the, the, the poor parking is, is a consequence. Uh, this This is where... A parking management scheme could come in, yeah. um, but yeah. it would have to involve a good number of roads wider yeah. than that. You'd have, to, you'd have to, them as well. you'd have to, you'd have to um, uh, start a new petition with a much bigger area to it. Um, but the one thing I'd say about parking management schemes is, um, uh, you would result, it would result in a lot less parking, um, and therefore. If uh, you and your neighbours rely on the parking, then, as, as the petitioner has mentioned, then, then you would end up with less spaces because the uh, the engineering requirements that are involved with a parking management yes, scheme I invariably uh, mean that you, you 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 would stop that you would stop that problem that the the, the the van would not be able to park as close to your yes. uh, drop curb as it currently does. Yeah. Uh, but the net result would be fewer spaces in the road. So um, it's something you can think about. Um, but, but as the officer said, I think if you registered it, at least if um, someone does park over it, you could do something about it. Um, okay. But it is, it's a problem in, in these narrow streets. Thank you. Sorry, Thank you very much. So no, uh, I oh, no. Oh, no, but it's in line with what he's got to say. 
Go on then, quickly. All we're trying to say is that is that the lining that we've got on the road is not even visible anymore. So the paintwork that was on the road is no longer visible. Yeah. So what no, he's trying to say is, if even if that was there visible, people wouldn't obstruct the way that people are yeah, parking. Exactly. So uh, what we actually are asking you guys as our council is to say, even if someone can come out and put clear lines of instructions, people that can then follow that. We don't want to hear a no. We've actually come to you guys to say, we need your support. Okay. We're, we're, sorry, um, we're not saying that at all. What, what we've agreed, or what I'm about to instruct, is that officers will uh, come down and have a look on site. Uh, they will see the issues uh, in the flesh, uh, and from that determine what is and isn't possible. Fine. That may well include remarking the, the, the existing on-pavement lines. It may re involve putting up new signs confirming that you can park with one wheel on the pavement, which Fine. is what this lady was talking about. Um, but it will depend, and obviously if new rules apply, it may re result in there being less uh, parking uh, on these manors. But we will, we will look at it, and we'll come back to you, and we'll tell the lead petitioner, and she can uh, distribute those thoughts Thank on you. a wider basis. Thank right? you very much. Thank you. Okay, so, Thank so you. the recommendations are as shown. Meet and listen to the, the petitioners, and subject to the above, ask the officers to um, look into this matter further. Agreed? Carried. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, so, the last petition of the evening, Sutton Court Road, Uxbridge, petition asking the Council to halt the planned works programme. Um, is the petitioner Lara Wilkshire here, please? Well, in that case, would you come here, uh, sit and um, speak? Uh, you have up to five minutes. Um, I may or may not ask you questions afterwards. You don't have to fill the five minutes, but you are entitled so to do. Okay, so you are well aware because there's been many correspondence between us about what our issues are with Sutton Court Road. Um, first of all, the road closure is still not on the London Borough of we Hillander website. Now, our petition was not to halt the work, as you just stated. It was to halt the work until a full consultation is done because we feel there hasn't been adequate consultation, there's been no survey, there's been no check of safety regulations. I've got the exact measurements here that prove the fact that it is dangerous and it doesn't meet the London Fire Brigade standards for width of road. Um, the, you keep harking on about the previous petition that I raised a number of years ago about the pay and display parking. That was when they decided to move the gate with, for Oakwood School and increase it by 375 places. At the time, it was free parking. It is now not. So what's being proposed doesn't... I mean, I, I'm not against pay and display parking, but I know that the other businesses will speak and it will definitely affect their businesses. Um, we've had no customers, literally, for five to six weeks since this work began. You cannot park, you cannot drive. It says road closed. Um, I tried to do a funeral consultation. I've got a grieving family to come to talk to me about funeral flowers, and all they can hear is a pneumatic drill outside my shop. There's n there was no planning. There was no consultation. Um, laughable in the paperwork that was sent that they mentioned air quality three times. The air quality is going to be reduced. Eight trees won't stop the reduction in pollution from the traffic jams this is going to cause. We haven't had answers to our questions. We still don't know if there's going to be disabled or loading bay. Um, they're putting an extra crossing, but we, what we actually needed was the zebra crossing. Uh, there's not adequate bins. We were given notice that the road was closing on the Friday of a bank holiday weekend, and they closed the road on Tuesday. So we were given less than one business day's notice about the road being closed. Uh, the times for the pay and display are not suitable for the businesses that are there. They're, they're stating that it's going to be a 9.30 in the morning. Uh, until 9.30, it'll be loading only. Some shops open at 7.30, so their customers can't park for the first two hours of trading. And deliveries come all day. They don't only come before 9.30. Um, we are all struggling to pay our rent this month because we've lost so much custom because of it. Um, we, they haven't answered simple questions whether they're going to clean the shop fronts. 
You know, all we've had is constant hostility from everybody at Hillenden Council. We've not been supported by our ward councillors. I have spoken to our local MP. The first person has actually had a proper conversation with me and actually listened to what I was saying to him, um, and he said he will follow up with me afterwards. So, you know, we've got some high hopes. But, yes, factually, the road width now, they've put the curve stones in, is measuring 5.2 metres. The average width of a transit van is 2.47 metres. A lot of transit vans down there. Liam at the cafe has a lot of traders come because that's what they do, go for their breakfast. You can have legally a 30 centimetre gap at the kerb. A fire engine by law needs 3.7 metres, which makes 6.4 metres, but the gap we've got is 5.2 metres. Now, when you speak to O'Hara, they go, they said, oh, yes, but legally we need to allow 1.3 metres. Okay, well, I've got documents here from the London Fire Brigade. The 1.3 metre is actually for a gate, not for a road. A road has to have 3.7 metre clearance for a fire engine to pass. Particularly, they mention if there's a building down that road taller than 12 metres. We have a three-storey tall secondary school at the end of the road, which is another safety concern. Has nobody thought about how a fire engine would get to a school? To, you know, it's just ludicrous. The planning was ridiculous. We haven't been consulted. All of these things could have been ironed out had somebody bothered to speak to us about it. I've got pages and pages of more other concerns, but they are the main ones, and the fire risk at the moment is the most pressing. I've also got a letter here, a statement here from one of the other shopkeepers that unfortunately was not able to come this evening, but he's provided a written statement, so I'll have a copy of that for you. Um, other shopkeepers are here, and... I'm sure they can mention their own problems that they're having. Thank you. Uh, mm, I couldn't begin to comment on any of the dimensions and stuff and so on and so forth, but I'll ask Mr Austin, who's our expert. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, it's not a scheme I'm particularly familiar with. I think my colleagues in, in another team have been, been leading on this, but um, I can only hope that when the independent road safety audit was completed on the scheme... It, sorry, sorry? Please. Um, when and if the road safety audit was completed on independent road safety audit was on this any issues about access would have been picked up on it so but I've not seen the audit and I don't know the scheme particularly well but I'm happy to feed that back into the relevant team okay good um, I have spoken to both the local councillors and uh, the MP um, the MP I saw this evening um, and they have all given me their opinion. Uh, you won't be surprised to know that they are um, in favour of the scheme being uh, completed. Um, I can't speak uh, in respect of any of the detail that you've raised. Uh, I'm not a traffic expert. Um, I uh, rely on other traffic. Uh, I, I rely on uh, officer uh, colleagues to provide that information for me. Um, I have confidence that uh, we have approached this properly, um, and uh, but I am I w I'm quite happy to ask officers to double check uh, that, that as far as they're concerned that they have uh, undertaken. Uh, I, I can't see why we wouldn't because we are meticulous in this sort of matter, uh, and I'm sure that if we designed it, it should have been designed correctly. But we will double check. Uh, that much you can take from me. Um, uh, I can't uh, comment on who was consulted and who wasn't. I didn't do the, undertake the consultation, but again, we are pretty careful about how we consult uh, and who we consult and the results that we get. Um, I think um, I, I'm, I'm sure all three of you want to make the same comment. Um, if you've got something different to say, I'm prepared to hear it. Yes. But one of but you'll have to come and sit there. Uh, provide it to the um, the clerk, please. Oh, hi there. I'm from Darcy's Cafe from Sutton Court. Um, I just want to raise from the 9 o'clock parking, no parking from 9 o'clock. That's what I want to sort of, because all my customers come in that early morning, I'm open at 7 o'clock. So what's going to happen if there's no parking? Um, thank you. I understand that the uh, consultation, the report on the consultation about the possible parking scheme.
scheme in Sun Court Road is currently being prepared by Catherine Flew. So nothing has been decided. So so nothing's been decided. I, don't, I don't think a decision has been made on whether or not the, this, the, the, the parking is going in. So it's not possible to comment on that, I'm afraid. Uh, what you're what you're saying is people come early. People come early. You open at seven or whatever, and and people come obviously then because they know you're there and they want to be able to park. Yeah, I, and if they can't park, what they're going to do? No, they're no, going to go, they're gonna well, go somewhere I mean, else. Gen generally, our schemes uh, stop parking from a time. So if it's from nine till five, then that would be when the scheme would be live, and uh, there would be restrictions on parking, and you'd have to buy a ticket or whatever it might be. Um, but but what that means is that outside of nine till five, so before nine and after five, uh, those rules wouldn't apply and you'd be able to park. Um, so I, I, that's what I would expect. But if the parking scheme hasn't been uh, confirmed yet, um, we will uh, we will um, we'll take note uh, and we'll make sure um, you are um, informed of where things stand on that. Yeah. Uh, you two gentlemen wanted to say anything. Um, I'm Paul Burge. I've got one of the shops in the parade. I have communicated with you. My name's Paul Burge, and I've got the aviation shop in the parade. Now, I have been communicating with you about deliveries. So you, you, when you say me, do you mean me, or yes. do you mean in no, general? No, you. Okay. You personally. All right. Okay. Um, so um, I have a problem in that, and as I put in my email to you, um, your words in the email was this is tried and tested. I've spoken to the shopkeepers in Ryefield Avenue and none of them like the island in the centre of the road and on inspection all the plastic pipes that are in the centre are broken or missing. My concern is when I have a delivery and these deliveries come directly from Felix though on a 40 ton lorry where is it going to stop and where is it going to unload now by the side of the bakers and if we'd had a meeting to discuss all of this in the beginning it could have saved a lot of stress and anxiety for all the shopkeepers that area there is ideal for a lorry to park and unload would you consider the parking area which is along by the side of the bakers, in between the bakers and the library, would you consider that to be the area for large lorries to unload, even up till 10 o'clock in the morning, it gives them a chance to get from Felixstowe to Sutton Court Road, which is a very important part of my business, and also for the news agents, they have uh, a 40 ton lorry delivering milk and various other items, and sometimes um, my colleague Lara um, will have an articulated lorry delivering flowers from Amsterdam. Now, we, we need a proper designated space. I feel if you could look at that, that area there at the end of the bakers, in between the bakers and the library, would be ideal for loading and unloading. You're talking about in the round the corner here. I Correct. Think. We can certainly look at that. Yeah. I, I mean, clearly, uh, um, it, it, clearly, if, if uh, large lorries need to be accommodated, we can certainly look at the whys and wherefores of, of, of that. Um, I, I, have, have, where have we got with this? We, we haven't concluded this, have we? I don't think so. No, we can look at that. I'd like, like to make it as a suggestion, yeah, no, that's what which I would have put suggest, forward. Suggestion noted and, and taken on board. We'll quite happily look at that. Yeah, yeah and that way, I mean, I've obviously I've looked at the, the measurements, and if a lorry, uh, a 40-ton lorry is going to pull up along the front of the shops anywhere, it's going to completely block the road. We don't want that. We, we want to try and, and, you know, keep everybody happy. So that is the only place, really, that would be uh, of use um, for all of us. Um, yes, it's still a little way from there to our shops, but that would keep it out of the way of the front of the whole parade, and uh, you know we could deal with it. We would have to use sack barrows, but we could deal with it. No, I don't see that being a problem. 
we will certainly look at that. Okay, thank you. Sorry, did, you have did you want to add something? Yeah. Can I raise one more question after? Hi, I'm Mr. Patel from Quick Wash, the laundrette. Okay, my concern is why was this necessary? And I have asked that question to you personally, right? And I was told because, you know, you're not happy with double parking. There are reasons for double parking there, right? You, you could have avoided double parking without the island, right? I don't see why the island is a, should be installed. Just because it fits for Ryefield Avenue or Northwood doesn't mean that it's going to fit here, okay? And also, look at the cost of it and the, and the uh, loss of business for us. Who's going to pay our rent this, this month? Uh, I Has that been addressed? And also, you say previously, you just mentioned about he's been having a proper consultation, right? You haven't. We are all, most of our shopkeepers are here, right? How, how, how many petitions people uh, put a petition against this? Against how many people were for it, besides the two councillors? And they're not even here. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't be here. They have another meeting to attend, which is no, why we, they, we, they rang me we, early we, this morning. We, put the ex we, we attend that meeting too. Um, anything all right? No one's looked at this without the island, about the double uh, well, parking. Look, I, I, uh, as, as I'm sure you appreciate, that I don't design these schemes. Yeah, nor, but you've nor, been nor answering nor questions to me. Sorry to well, interrupt. Well, I, I asked the officers to prepare the answer for me because I don't have the detailed uh, knowledge or the skill. Uh, no, I'm not going to. Uh, or the skills uh, relating to it. Uh, look, I've heard what you've said. I think you've made some sensible suggestions, particularly about the parking. Uh, we'll look at that. Uh, we'll come back to you on the timing. Sorry, you had another question. Do you want to? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically, I'm just I'm a little bit worried at the moment because I haven't paid the rent, can't afford the rent. In this six weeks from opening in lockdown on my first business, I have never struggled so bad in this six weeks, and really I haven't got the money to pay the rent for this month because of this six weeks. I've never ever been so close, um, so quiet. I had to lay off two girls that work for me. They've gone now. So I don't know what you can suggest or you can help. We really not come here to fight. I've come here for help, really. Um, well, I, as a council, we don't offer help in this sort of uh, situation. The only thing that uh, you can apply for, uh, and I'm no expert in it, is you can apply for some rate relief uh, in special circumstances. Now, I don't know the detail, but you could look on the council website or get in touch with, um, well, or get in touch with the council, um, uh, and we can, uh, there is discretionary rate relief uh, for businesses in, in difficulties. Now, that we may be able to help with, but more than that, I couldn't, um, I couldn't tell you. Okay, thank you. Um, there are three recommendations here um, that I've listened, that I've uh, seen the note re relating to the outcome of the recent consultation, and I've asked the officers to review, well, the parking measures you don't think are in place at the moment? No. They haven't been agreed? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay. Well, we, we will take him on board. We'll come back to you on those mm -hmm. answers, and we'll come back to you on that, on that issue there. Mm -hmm. uh, because it, they both seem quite sensible. I, d I, don't, I think there's probably more of a misunderstanding than, than an issue in terms of people not being able to park before 9 o'clock. I think it's probably just a case of they can park and don't have to pay before 9 o'clock, but from 9 o'clock onwards. But anyway, we'll, uh, I'm guessing, so I'll... I'll We'll, we'll come back to you on those And would, would you know if, if it... If you've got points you wish to raise, however, please don't address them to me. Address them to our officers. Good try. Um, do you know, what was I going to say, um, the parking, would it be the free half an hour or would it be you have to pay for everything? Uh, no, uh, people, uh, we have a free half hour everywhere in the borough. So you, you, if, Even if, if, for residents, if, for residents. if you wasn't a resident, you'd have to pay. If you're, if you're not a resident, you have to pay, yeah. I'm not sure that the decision has been made on the parking. But I, I will, we'll I will talk, we'll I will talk to, you, to the we'll relevant team. We'll check it, we'll let you know. Can I just ask one more question, please? Well, I'll close the meeting, but you can ask. You don't need that. Okay. I just wanted to 
ask you, right, as far as the parking uh, restriction, uh, parking arrangements are going to happen, are we going to be consulted? Or is it just going to be, oh, it has been consulted and this From is it? From my knowledge, there's already been a formal consultation on parking, but I'll check with my colleague at the answer. <laughs> Isn't it funny that we, none of us has been told or consulted? Oh, I, I didn't <laughs> 